What's the worst thing that's happened to one of your friends? He was helping an elderly couple with chores around the house to help support his new family. They had two adult children. They were both in town at the time. The son shot his sister, his parents, and then my friend and put the gun in his hand and pinned it all on him. Didn't take long to prove who done it, but not after his name was tarnished. She worked as a bartender and her fiancé came in drunk out of his mind and acting strange. She had to tell him she couldn't serve him. He left upset. She went home a few hours later and found him trying to assault her teen daughter. She fought him he cut open her face from forehead to chin. She said she could see her facial bones. He held them hostage for hours. She knocked him out with a bat and carried her daughter banging on all the neighbor's doors finally someone opened up and got the cops. He was on the run for a while but finally caught. Was sentenced to 58 years. She has a huge deep scar on her face. Her daughter is still a sweet young lady who has kept a positive mindset. In high school a friend of mine was stopped at an intersection, when some lady rear-ended him, she was checking with her phone and didn't even slow down. This pushed his vehicle through the intersection and pinned a girl waiting for the bus against a telephone pole, where she died. She was cycling through London and a bus hit her so hard she came off, landed on head, and died. She was also quite literally the last member of her family. Both her parents were only childs and had both died of cancer, and she had no siblings. Her death was the end of her family tree. She was 23. I had a friend who I went through elementary school and middle schools with. He moved away in the middle of 7th grade and our friend group was heartbroken, but figured we'd see him again. Last week, he was shot in the head by his friend who was showing him a gun and pointed it at him as a joke. He was 18. One of my best friends in high school was murdered when he opened the back door of the Little Caesars we worked for when someone knocked. It was after closing on a Sunday, and he probably expected it to be one of our friends coming by to toke up. He was one of the coolest, most chill guys you'd ever meet, and he took a shotgun to the face that night. <laughs> Tried to swim to shore from a sailboat in Lake Michigan. She was a strong swimmer, but even in the summer hypothermia is a threat. They didn't find her body for several days and during that time famous fake psychic Sylvia Brown told the family she was alive and being held on a boat against her will. Still miss you, Julie. There's a really good friend of mine that was driving his girlfriend at the time and got hit by a drunk driver. Only fatality of that accident was my friend's GF. It's been about 10 to 15 years and he still doesn't drive. That shit destroyed him. He is still a happy dude but it isn't the same for real. Just broke. He and his brother were away at college. His father fell asleep with a cigar in hand, and the house began to burn. So far as could be determined, the father woke, went to get his wife, carried her downstairs, and made it to within a couple feet of the door. They both died, and the house was destroyed. I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma and many of my childhood friends have died well before their time. One of them was murdered execution style after a bad business deal surrounding a music video. Another forgot to put the parking brake on while making a quick repair on a derrick and it rolled back on him and crushed his head. Another disappeared after a tour in Iraq, just called his wife to say he couldn't come home because he had murdered children. A lot of the ones that are still alive are in prison or in and out of rehab. I've gone through a few things that seemed awful but I've been very lucky to avoid the worst of it I think. People who break into cars are generally not the kind of people with well-documented, traceable identities. They're at the bottom. And the good ones can get it done without leaving a meaningful trace, anyway. So they don't have much to lose and can get away with, anything. So if you're like my friend, and you see someone breaking into your car at 1am behind a strip mall with no cameras, you shouldn't get involved. But if you were my friend that night, you decide to confront the bastard. And you get stabbed to death. And there are no leads. A close friend, single mom with three kids, one of her kids was severely autistic. He was setting really aggressive, he was 16-ish, and she didn't know what to do or how to control him. She tried everything. He got worse. Eventually one day when the girls were gone, he sexually assaulted and murdered her. My friend was murdered by a psychopath, she set fire to his apartment which had no fire escape. Killed his wife, 
his two-year-old son and his niece and nephew both five and seven, she went to drink in a bar after the attack and was laughing about. She is in prison now and hopefully she will leave in a body bag. She believed that the mate's wife was having an affair with her boyfriend but actually her boyfriend was the wife's brother. One of my friends was murdered by her ex-boyfriend. Several months before it happened, they got drunk and high and he absolutely destroyed her house and then tortured her. He stabbed her, put hot sauce in her eyes, beat her with a belt, and forced her. She broke it off with him after that. We don't know for sure what happened but he got into her house, and he killed her. I'd never been so numb in my entire life when my wife told me what had happened, and I started thinking about her children. She had lost custody of them and now their mom was gone. I think about her all the time. Grew up in a very religious household, evangelical Christian. Was the youngest of four girls. All of her sisters married young and started having babies non-stop due to the nature of their religion. However, she was usually forced to babysit for her sisters, who often would live at home with their parents for long stretches of time due to financial trouble. She loved dogs, and finally got a dog that she loved to death. However, her oldest sister's husband was very cruel to her, he saw her as a servant and sexually harassed her. One day, they got into a huge argument so he went and got her dog to bite him due to bothering her. He claimed the dog attacked him outright and that he was afraid the dog would bite one of the kids, so her parents got rid of the dog. My friend was absolutely devastated. It wasn't long after that that she started doing mission work in other countries. I think it was an excuse to get away from her home. She's doing better now, has a boyfriend and still does mission work. He killed himself. Gunshot to the head. He was a felon for reasons he regretted, served his sentence and tried to move on with his life. I don't know what triggered it, but he was too good a person to be treated how society treated him. He was almost finished with trade school. <laughs> Committed suicide after a girl falsely claimed he forced her. They were co-workers, they flirted non-stop at work, and were always together at after work stuff. One night, house party of co-workers, they go upstairs and finally hook up after months of flirting. Problem was, he was a short kinda nerdy guy and not very attractive. Super genuine and nice guy, just short, skinny, with three hairs on his chin. Next day at work, she got teased pretty hard by other female co-workers for hooking up with that ugly guy. So she claimed he forced her. Despite it being very mutual. Issue into HR, police were involved. Dude lost his job, and was facing charges. Hung himself in his apartment. Wasn't found for a while. She was remorseful after he was already dead. She faced no consequences for what she did to him. Moved to New York City with my best friend from college when we were both 22. Got an apartment together, struggled to get jobs together, were basically living our best lives as young, broke girls in the big city. One day she's in a coffee shop using Wi-Fi and a dude comes up to her and starts chatting. He's a lot older, late 40s, but seems nice and asks for her number. Eventually she gives it to him. He calls, takes her to dinner at this sushi place, spends like $800. He starts taking her out every weekend, spending massive amounts of money. Eventually she just doesn't come home on weekends. Then, she doesn't come home during the week. I'm constantly checking in with her to see how she's doing since she basically moved in with him after 3 months and it all seems weird to me. She says she's fine, but tells me to stop calling so much as he doesn't like her spending a ton of time on the phone with her friends. Six months later, he proposes. She accepts. That was in October. They had a wedding planned for the summer, they did a quickie courthouse wedding on a road trip in May. Last month, she announced she is pregnant. She didn't call me, I found out on Instagram. I messaged her on IG saying congratulations, and she said thanks, that it was all happening so fast and she didn't know if she was really ready for marriage and kids, but because he was so much older it made the most sense to do it all right away. She said if I want to talk more to do it through Instagram messaging, as he generally finds out about stuff she says over text. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.